right, here we go. Finally, 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 the Frozen Horror from the Frozen Horror expansion. This has probably been the most requested video in a long time. And at first I was not going to do it because I'm not going to get this on the table anytime soon. But there's so many people that ask me to paint this. So we're going to finish the set. That I promise. We're pleasing the fans here. And as always, I want to thank all the YouTube members. You guys are absolutely amazing. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you so much for your... Uh, your awesome uh, donations. You guys are absolutely amazing. Can't thank you guys enough. If this is your first time at the channel, or if you're returning, hit that subscribe button. You got nothing to lose. But without further ado, let's go. All right, as always, we are going to scrape those nasty mold lines off our miniature. There's a decent amount, mostly around the rim of the base, but nothing too crazy on this miniature. Take a file or a scraper, craft knife, whatever you have, and scrape those mold lines off. Next, we're going to use some uh, primer, black primer on this, and you can use rattle cans if you want. That'll save you a ton of time, but I was doing a whole bunch at once, so this... Uh, is good for that type of scenario. So hit that with black, and then we're gonna do a zenithal highlight from above of white. Again, you can use spray paint if you want, probably be a little bit easier. All right, this video is a little bit longer than normal videos, so there's a lot more steps, a lot of stuff going on, so bear with me. Um, follow along step by step. Try and do your best as far as the method of my madness. There might be little things we can squeeze here and there, but first thing we're going to do is going to be painting our fur areas with Mechanicus Standard Gray. This is going to give us a nice base color on this, and we're going to do a whole bunch of colors, and it's going to mix in. It's gonna look pretty decent at the end, but just again, stick with me. After that gray is dry, we're gonna take some gray sear. We're gonna dry brush this on. Uh, you can use some stippling as well, where you push it in, just push it down into the fur. Uh, just to get that nice and covered. You don't have to cover the whole thing, just a portion of it. Next, we're going to do the same thing, just time with a little bit of Minestratum Gray. Again, you're going to lighten up that color just a little bit, but you want some of that gray to be sticking out from underneath. It's going to create that nice variant, kind of like the polar bear we did, or the werebear, or that wampa, or whatever we painted before. It's similar to that. And finally, we're going to take some Prexetti white and make some white on there as well, right before we do our wash that we're about to make here in a second. Next, we're going to take a 50-50 mix of Nolan Oil and Contrast, not Contrast Medium, Lamia Medium. There we go. We're going to mix that together, and then we're going to slap it over everything we just painted. Now, it's not going to be too thick. It's not going to be too runny. It's just going to be just right, and you'll see here that in a second. And we're going to put that all over the areas that you had just painted over, all the fur areas, and you're going to notice that it's not too thick. If you were just to use straight Nolan oil, it'd be way too dark, in my opinion and it would really take away from what we had just painted. So we're just gonna use that on there. After that is completely dry, you can see that it's sticking out very well, but it's not overpowering. We're gonna take a dry brush of Blue Horror and we're just gonna paint that on the top of our head uh, fur area. You can do a little bit into the cheek areas as well. Uh, this is a very subtle color. We're going to really spruce this up later down the road, but this is just to kind of get you a base of what you need. Next, we are going to take some Night Lord's Blue and we're going to paint the armor area over by the middle region of our 
miniature. There's this portion and then a portion on the chest as well that you're going to want to paint. So take your time on this. Next we're going to do a 50-50 mix of the silver and blue and we're going to paint it over just what we went over. Now this is going to create that metallic looking blue that we're looking for that is similar to the art on uh, this miniature. That's what we're looking for. For our metal areas along our pauldrons and portion of the axe knees area we're going to use some of this Iron Warriors and we're going to want to paint that all over those areas. Take your time on this. Don't try and rush it. It's going to be kind of a pain. Again, this is not a fast moving painting miniature. This does take some time. For the axe, we're going to use some lead belcher just on the inside portion of the axe. Followed by some Grey Knight's steel on the axe. For the axe handle, we're going to use some Mornfang Brown. Followed by painting all of our fur areas for hands, fur matching the card out, we're going to use the Fang. For the armor areas, we're going to paint it in Mornfrang Brown as well. Followed by the leather areas with some steel legion drab underneath it. I mean, you know what I mean. The top fur, we're going to use some XV88 error. And some Rhinox hide on our leather straps that are connecting the back armor, I guess you could say. I don't know.
we're going to use some retributor armor on our gold areas and some tassels that are connected to our gold areas. Also, do not forget to paint the gold earrings on our miniature here. I didn't do this until later down the road, but you can fix that by doing it now. To brighten up our metallic blue areas, we're going to use some Hoeth blue. Thin it, of course, and you're going to put it all over the blue areas on the bottom portion only. For our toenails and fingernails, we're going to use some Magos purple. And for our tongue, we're going to use some Screamer Pink to finish up the base coat on this miniature. For our axe and our blue skin, the blue skin, we're going to use some Nolan Oil and put that all over there. You can thin it on the skin if you want. If you don't want it as dark um, as I have it in this video, it's up to you though. Followed by some Agrax Earthshade on all the brown areas. You can put this on the gold areas as well. It is up to you. Uh, we're going to repaint them if you want, or you can just keep them as is and let them just chill. All right, starting up the highlighting phase of this miniature, we're gonna start with white. Now we're gonna paint all of the white areas where our ice um, areas are at. There's a ton, there's a ton on the ax, bottom of the ax, on the pauldrons, um, face area. Just take your time, try and pick them all out. I'm using a big brush in certain areas and a small brush in other areas. Um, this is what really makes the miniature, in my opinion, these vibrant blue colors are about to hit it in several steps. So take your time, make sure you hit all the white areas. All right, now to go back at our skin and to brighten this up and change it to what the card art looks like or the art in the rule book, we're gonna reapply some of the fang. Followed by a 50-50 mix of rust gray and the fang. Again, we're hitting the same areas. We wanna do the same concept of hitting um, the fingernails, the knuckles and stuff like that to uh, make them more vibrant and bright. Next, we're going to take a pure rust gray and paint over that area we just went over. And you're going to start noticing that the uh, color is going to be starting getting lighter and lighter and lighter, and that's what we're aiming for.
Next, we're going to take a 50-50 of the Russ and the Fenrisian. And again, going over the same areas, really focusing on the knuckles and the hands area. And finally, we're going to take some pure Fenrisian gray and we're going to put it on to the hands area and the top portions of our blue fur. This is going to create that nice blue that's matching the card art. Color matches pretty well in my opinion. Now we're going to go back and reapply some gray sear onto our white uh, fur areas just to brighten them up just a little bit. Do not get them in the recesses. Just We're just brighten them up to make it a little bit more stand out-ish, I guess you could say. Then we're going to do the same thing with some Othurin gray just to make it stand out just a little bit more. Then to do some edge highlighting, we're going to take some Ruin Fang Steel and edge highlight our pauldrons. You can use this on the axe as well, but we're going to hit a dry brush here in a second of not Necron Compound. You're going to see on the next slide, like I'm doing a PowerPoint or something. <laughs> so hit that area up real quick. All right, to brighten up our fur just a little bit with that blue matching more of the art, we're gonna take some Rust Gray, Gray Sear 50-50 mix, and you're gonna hit just the top portions a little bit on the side and the ears as well. This is gonna create that blue variant that you see in the art. Next, you could take some pure rust gray and hit like the nose area a little bit on the cheeks and the tops of the ears, really creating that blue color. And that's what we're aiming for. To brighten up the fur on the back side, we're gonna use some Talarin sand followed by some doom bowl brown on the back side and the leather on our axe Now to really make this miniature stand out, we're gonna take some of that Frost Heart and it's a contrast paint. You can do another way if you want, but this to me makes the miniature, it really makes it stand out. You're gonna put that all over the white areas that match the art on the rule book. For our eyes, we're going to use some Briar Queen Chill. Briar Queen's Chill, there we go. And we're going to put just a dollop in the eye. Now it's going to be like a, a drop in there and it'll dry and it'll make that variant of the color. Now I'm going to be honest, I totally forgot about the teeth while painting this until I realized, oh man, I never did the teeth. So we're gonna take some of that uh, wrath bone, paint those onto the teeth, followed by some Agrax Earthshade here, you'll see here in a second.
And while that Agrax is drying on the teeth, take some 50-50 mix of contrast and basilicanum gray and slap that onto the base. That'll make the cracks and everything else stand out perfectly on this. Then go back with some of that same Rathbone and put it onto our teeth, picking out just the teeth. Don't go all get a dry brush or any stuff like that and there's just the teeth. And then we're gonna follow that up with some Screaming Skull just to brighten it up, only paint about half the tooth each time. And to brighten up our tongue, we're gonna to take one first color of Pink Horror and then follow that up by Emperor's Children, just painting on the each side, leave that middle area and the recess is dark. And finally, your favorite part of painting this miniature, because that means we're done. Some Abaddon Black on the rim of that base. Whew. All right, took a little longer than you know you probably hope, but there's a lot going on with this miniature. We're trying to make it look good, so we had to add some extra steps. In my opinion, for a tabletop standard, this is pretty good. We could have done some other crazy stuff, but we didn't. But you finished it. Looks pretty good. Send me your pictures on Instagram. I love seeing everything. What everybody paints makes me more motivated to paint more. I just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you for watching this. Thank you for all my YouTube members, the subscribers. If you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please do. We just hit our two-year mark here on the channel. Maybe three? I don't know how long. But we're not going to stop. But until next time, paint on.